have a customer who came in with a check engine light for a cylinder one misfire. Thanks to them having a Cobb access port, it was super easy for me to verify the code. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically test drive the vehicle. Uh, misfires can be caused by a hundred different things, but more commonly than not, most of the times it ends up being something simple like a spark plug or a coil pack. So this one should be a pretty easy diag to at least make sure that we're hunting in the right direction. What I have done is I set up our access port on a layout of at least four gauges and I put a roughness monitor on each cylinder. And what I'm gonna do now is basically just drive it and we're gonna see hopefully numbers jump up on cylinder one. So I'll give it a little bit of gas now. Oh yeah. So I don't know if the camera's gonna pick this up or not, but basically on cylinder one there, our roughness shot up to looks like 33. The moment it started to build boost is when this happened. So that's normally a strong sign towards we're gonna have an issue with either the coil pack or the spark plug. Considering the rest of the cylinders looked fine, my gut is telling me that it's more than likely gonna be a coil pack, but I'm gonna drive it back to the shop now. We'll pull it into the bay and we'll see what we end up finding out. All right, so the next step in diagging this issue should be pretty simple. Uh, we already took it out on the test drive. We saw the numbers jump up on cylinder one from the roughness monitor. So what we're gonna do now, since we suspect that it's a coil pack, is we're gonna change the coil pack from cylinder one and cylinder three, we're gonna swap them. And then we're gonna take it back out for a test drive and we're gonna see what the vehicle does. We still have the access port up, monitoring the roughness on all four cylinders. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try to duplicate the symptoms that we did last time. And that was pretty simple. All I'm gonna do is give it a little bit of gas. And yeah, immediately we now have a roughness count jumping up on cylinder three. So pretty safe at this point to say that the issue was the coil pack. The only thing that's changed from this test drive and the last test drive was obviously we swapped the coil packs. So we'll go back to the shop, we'll put a new coil pack in there and I think this customer will be all good to go. So after two test drives, we've confirmed that we had an issue on cylinder one. We took the suspected problematic coil pack out of cylinder one and put it into cylinder three, took it out on a second test drive and had the exact same symptoms and issues show up. So it's pretty safe to say that that coil pack has been the corporate of the misfire all along. So the next step is replacing the coil pack, which we've already done. This was the one that came out of there. It appears to be in fairly good shape and it you know, looks like it's probably a fine part, but We've already seen the data, and we already know that that's not true, so we're gonna throw that thing away. I actually made that shot, but you guys didn't get to see that. Anyways, so coil pack's already been replaced. Uh, it's kind of hard to see in there. I'm gonna try to get in there so you can see it. It's got a new shiny bolt on there. Anyways, we have the new coil pack on there. We're gonna take it back out for a test drive just to confirm that everything's good, which I'm sure it will be. We're gonna do the same thing we've done the last two test drives. We're gonna put the vehicle under a little bit of a load and see if we have any issues. Perfect. So we're not having any issues. We're not having the sputtering. We're not having the jerking. We're not having any loss of power or cutting in and out like we were the last two times we tried that. And thanks to our access port, we can take a look now and we can see that we have zeros across the board for our roughness monitor. So our suspicions were right all along. Our misfire was being caused by a bad coil pack. All right, so that concludes it. We've diagnosed the issue, we've repaired the issue, and we've confirmed that our repair worked. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. One other thing that I would like to note is that when you replace your coil pack, if your car is just a factory setup, please keep a factory OEM Subaru coil pack in there. I get so many people that try to replace their coil packs on their own and come back here to us and still have the same issue they had before they replaced the coil pack. And 90% of the time it turns out that it was just a bad coil pack that they had gotten from their local auto parts store or somewhere online and it didn't quite do the job. So for you know, this job in particular, I would definitely recommend keeping it with an OEM coil pack. Uh, you can look at performance ones, but you really won't need them unless you're pushing a lot of horsepower, which if you do, that'll, you know, probably won't be watching this video to diagnose your issue. <laughs> uh, anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Please like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. We're gonna continue to try to produce content that hopefully helps people out there. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them below. And until then, we'll see you next time.